Hello and welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. I'm Grady Wong and today we are continuing our coverage of Spelljammer ship scale minis with the Astral Elf Patrol fixed set box of pre-painted minis from WizKids. And thank you to WizKids for sending it to us to review. Now, I had some pretty extensive thoughts about how poorly the published 5e rule set supports ship scale combat and ship combat in general, which I cover in our first video in this series, which you can see in the eye in the corner of the screen, which covered the Welcome to Wild Space box. I won't be rehashing that here, and in fact, I'm actually pretty excited about this box. You'll see why shortly. But before we dive in, check out the Fable Maker's animated tarot deck from our friends at Hitpoint Press. Each card has gorgeous custom art with eight frames of animation, and the set comes with a tarot guidebook to enhance your games. It teaches you all about using tarot in your everyday life, as well as how to inspire your RPG creativity, from creating NPC backstories on the fly to enhancing your PC's motivations in history and more. Order the guidebook, deck, or both in a discounted box set today. Shape your story at animatedtarot.com. We'll start out with the Ancient Lunar Dragon. Since it's ship scale, it's on a large base and sized reasonably for a young lunar dragon at regular mini scale, though you could also pass it off as a flying wormling. This is also the only lunar dragon mini currently available from WizKids other than the adult one that is only available through the 700 plus US dollars collector's box. So I really like the options this figure offers. Lunar dragons were introduced in the Boo's Astral Menagerie portion of the Spelljammer Adventures in Space box set of three books for 5e, and they're evil dragons who make lairs by burrowing under the surface of moons. They enjoy stealing treasure from other creatures more than appreciating their own hoard. The ancient version has a CR of 19, the young version a CR of 7, and the wormling a CR of 2. And yes, we get not one, but two dragon minis in this set. Here is the ancient solar dragon, again on a large base, so usable as a young solar dragon or a growing wormling. We do have more options for solar dragon minis, as a young one on a huge base is in the Spelljammer booster box set, and an adult one on a gargantuan base with a spot for a rider is sold separately as a premium figure box set. You can see reviews for both the booster box set and the adult solar dragon with Prince Zeleth at the links in the eye in the corner of the screen. Solar dragons are born from stars and driven by the need for food, though they'll typically avoid humanoids who are just too troublesome as prey. An ancient solar dragon has a CR of 21. Now onto the ship and astral elf portion of the box. The damselfly is the ship with the smallest capacity, less than even the shrike ship we saw in the Welcome to Wild Space box. It can only carry five tons of cargo and a crew of nine. They're fast and have a relatively high AC of 19 though, so they're popular as courier vessels and armored transports. They're not exclusive to astral elves, but their flashy appearance and colorful paint jobs make them a good fit with an elven aesthetic. Aesthetic. What I extra like about this figure with its medium base is that it looks sufficiently insect-like that you could pass it off as a flying creature at regular mini scale. It's a bit big for a Sturge. Super Sturge? But you can definitely get creative and reuse this mini as a big insect monster, an artificer's construct, or a magic item like a figurine of wondrous power. Finally, we have the Star Moth, which is a design largely exclusive to the Astral Elves. They are the original designers and try to prevent it from falling into the hands of other races. Again, the insectile look of the ship lends itself to reuse in the same way as the Damselfly, and I really like the imposing transparent wings, which are supposed to be made of crystal, but could also be organic or magical in nature. The weapons on this ship are in the eye holes up front, which makes me want to homebrew a gigantic moth that shoots lasers out of its eyes, you better watch out, Godzilla. Overall, I like the design and the choices of this set. While you were watching those turntables, though, you may have noticed a few things. Uh, first of all, for the Star Moth, uh, if you had been looking at the packaging, you would notice that the wings are actually packaged separately from the ship itself. We had a little bit of a tr trouble slotting like the wings in exactly, and they ended up being a bit lopsided, and they are a little bit easy to fall out if you jostle them around. Again, we don't know if this is specific to our 
one or like if they're all like this, but that was a little bit difficult. It's not a huge deal. Um, and if you know you want to glue it in or use tack or something to hold it in place, it'll be perfectly fine. The wings of the lunar dragon are also kind of touching each other above it, and when they're actually supposed to be a bit further apart. Uh, again, that happens when the mini uh, bends in the packaging, basically. And the tail of the solar dragon also had that issue. You'll notice it was kind of just going out all over the place, and it's really supposed to kind of, I guess, twirl around behind it. Uh, so all of these can be fixed with a hot water trick, which is, you know, you run the mini under hot water so that it becomes a bit more pliable, uh, bend it kind of to the shape that you like, run it under cold water. You may have to literally rinse and repeat a few times to get it to stay in that position because they do have a tendency to kind of try to, try to bend back. Usually what happens is that these packages are exposed to heat during the shipping or storage uh, process and, the, and then the way they're packaged, that causes them to bend. Uh, so, you know, yours may be fine, or if not, they are fixable. As for the set itself, I think it sidesteps a lot of the problems that ship scale minis have in 5e simply by being versatile and offering compelling, unique sculpts. It's the easiest and most guaranteed way to get the two new dragon types added in Spelljammer, the lunar and solar dragons, and both ships look like they could be used as constructs or monstrosities in your regular game. It's also solid support for the 5e Spelljammer adventure Light of Xerixis, as Astral Elves feature heavily in it. In the lore, people also like to race their damselfly ships, so that's another little mini game encounter or whole one-shot you could build around that mini. Though you may need more than one for a race, I suppose. Basically, if you're going to play Spelljammer, you'll be able to find a use for the four figures in this box set. The Astral Elf Patrol box set is available now and has a manufacturer-suggested retail price of $59.99 US dollars, though you can shop around for sales. But at that price, it comes out to $15 per mini, of which you get one pretty big medium mini, two large minis, and one huge mini. We're going to be covering all the ship scale mini boxes, of which there are six total, in the coming days. So be sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already, and the bell icon to be notified as soon as the videos come out. We also have various playlists of all our mini reviews, official D&D accessory reviews, and more. Thank you for watching today. If this video was helpful to you, hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to check out our sponsor, Hit Point Press's Fable Makers Animated Tarot Cards and Guidebook at animatedtarot.com. You can also join our Discord using the link in the video description, as well as find us on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you're having a wonderful winter holiday season. Stay safe, have fun, love each other, and we will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <music>